We start in Burgess with the Malayan trilogy. There's also the Enderby tetralogy. And then there's this, the scriptural or biblical uh, trilogy or triptych. And the middle panel of this triptych is called Man of Nazareth. And there is in here a arresting account of the sexuality of Herod Antipater. The narrator, whose name is Azor, the son of Sadok, says on the matter, I find it somewhat embarrassing to discuss the amorous propensities of monarchs, even for that matter, of their subjects. Herod Antipater had in youth worn out the possibilities of normal sensual gratification and in maturity had to exploit such fantastic variations on the basic theme of coition as a fevered imagination would suggest to him. Herodias, to whom Philip had surprisingly given a daughter named Salome, did not at first realise so hot was she on fulfilling her ambition to gain power, that the main attraction in the legally incestuous marriage was the hope of piling, as it were, incest on incest. For he had reached a stage in his libidinous odyssey when he could only attain erotic purgation through contact with very young flesh of either sex, and the flesh of Salome, was very young, though undoubtedly female flesh. Herod Antipater did not demand coition at this phase of his anabasis towards eventual impotence. It was enough that his eyes be excited by the sight of a young body, unclothed, half-clothed, progressively and somewhat slowly divested of its clothes with, if possible, an accompaniment of precociously wanton writhings, leers, poutings, pantings, movements of simulated rut. This would procure in the Tetrarch at least an ithyphallic engorgement and if certain gods unrelated to the God of Israel smiled upon him, an accession of spontaneous pollution. 